I'm a big Star Trek fan, as many of you know. I've seen every episode of all five TV series, and of course, all the movies. Now, the JJ films, to me, really don't sit within the original Roddenberry canon. They just feel like generic Hollywood action films with a Star Trek veneer. For the most part, what I like about Star Trek is its pure sci-fi elements, clever storytelling, thought-provoking and political messages, and general philosophy of peaceful cooperation. When it was at its best, the franchise delivered some of the most compelling high-concept science fiction you'll see on television. And in the case of Deep Space Nine, some frickin' awesome space battles. But one thing always kind of bothered me. The economics of the Federation. Just how do they pay for all those starships to be built? While it turns out in the future there is no money, but people still work, construct spaceships, pursue careers, and even own property. And they do it all for the greater good, for the betterment of humanity. How much does this thing cost? The economics of the future are somewhat different. You see, money doesn't exist in the 24th century. No money? You mean you don't get paid? The acquisition of wealth is no longer the driving force in our lives. We work to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. Sounds very nice, but it also kinda sounds a little communist, like a communist utopia, but it's not really when you look at it. It's certainly not exactly a free market capitalist society either. There is evidence that people can own property and start businesses. Captain Sisko's father ran a restaurant on Earth, so do his customers reimburse him for his labor through some kind of credit system? Or does he just slave away at his kitchen peeling potatoes, making food for the love of it and for the betterment of mankind? It always strikes me as kind of odd. There has been mention of a Federation credit system, but the writers never really got particularly specific about it, and they never really clarified the finer points. I'm not directly criticizing this vision of an economic system, but merely exploring the viability of it. What appears to be certain is that in the next generation Deep Space Nine Voyager era of the franchise, society migrated from capitalism into something approaching a post-scarcity phase with some socialist leanings for sure. The reason for this is likely due to how certain technologies of the future managed to alter the very fabric of society. I am of course talking about things like transporters, holodecks, and matter replication. The replicator is capable of breaking down matter and recycling and reconstituting it into a completely different form. With the replicator, labor demands for critical resources such as food, water, shelter, housing, and even clothing are made redundant. Because resources are now abundant, infinitely abundant, and reproducible, like magic, you can have anything you need to survive and even produce extraneous material possessions. Yet free trade isn't completely eradicated either. In Star Trek Voyager, the crew did suffer from energy shortages as a result of being stranded so far from home, which meant they regularly had to resort to replicator rationing. This in turn gave rise to private monetary agreements between crew members by means of exchanging replicator rations for goods, services, or favors. In Star Trek Voyager also, the holographic doctor was cited as being the property of the Federation, as was Data in an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. In their respective episodes, they had to deal with this, and they both had to prove their standing as sentient beings worthy of human rights. Nevertheless, it's clear that the Federation isn't truly communist given the presence of private ownership and a strong focus on individual liberty and freedoms. There's no doubt that if we ever do achieve matter replication technology, our economic systems will change radically and possibly begin to resemble something like Star Trek's 24th century vision. But none of this fully explains who built the starships and what motivated them to do so in the first place. Someone wanted this gigantic vessel to be built, and not everyone gets the opportunity to sit in the captain's chair. The person who wanted this ship to be built obviously wasn't going to build it themselves. The citizens of the Federation are free to choose their own careers, and there is obviously a demand for engineers, designers, architects, builders, and developers, and there must be a meritocracy-based marketplace for the best and the brightest. Not everybody has the same talents. Why would any military organization settle for average or mediocre workers to build their vehicles and ships? Surely the best way to discover the best talent would be through vetting candidates and incentivizing the best of them through some kind of financial reward. Despite all the automation of the future, 
there are still a few menial type jobs knocking around in the 24th century, and some people still have to get their hands dirty scrubbing plasma conduits and relays, repairing warp cores, and even fixing the matter replicators themselves. There are clearly certain technical and highly skilled roles needed. Not everyone is going to be capable or interested in pursuing these roles, and therefore the financial incentive must be there to encourage these industries to flourish. Well, I can't figure it all out, but maybe you can in the comments below. Star Trek's economics, are they viable? How do you see them working out? And am I missing something? Let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.